Hi, I'm Andrew Berry and welcome to At The Bench and welcome to another product review film. Well, at last the day has come. I have managed to get my hands on these two anti-plastic stakes. These are stakes that are available from certain tools. Anti-plastic, you may be wondering what anti-plastic means. And it means forming a flat, sort of single dimensional uh, piece of metal into three dimensions, but in two different ways. You can curve, for instance, a bangle, and that's going around. But using these anti-plastic stakes, you can also curve the surface. So there's a curve that goes in the opposite direction to the main curve. And using these two stakes, we can produce fantastic uh, shell-formed ideas. We can produce bangles with fantastic three dimensions, with waves, with shapes. But not just bangles, it can be anything. Bangles, earrings, rings, whatever you want to make up. As I say, these are the stakes that we've just had in. They're made of Delrin. Now, Delrin is a engineering grade thermoplastic. Um, engineers may uh, refer to it as POM, which is polyoxymethylene plastic. But we don't need to know that. What we need to know is made of Delrin. Now, Delrin is a plastic that is non-marking, which means that when you're you're hammering your your items, you're not hammering against metal. You're hammering against the plastic here, which has a slight give to it, which does mean the fact that it won't stretch your metal like metal stakes would. And these have been developed by two ladies, uh, Cynthia Eid and Betty Helen Longy, and they're the two of the foremost practitioners of shell forming. Let me explain what they are first of all. It looks like, um, like antlers, doesn't it, basically? You've got the form here. Um, it's made, this particular is, is, is the medium stake, and it's made of one inch thick solid delrin. It has 12 bays spaced along the stake, ranging from 3 8 diameter here right up to an 8 inch diameter right in the middle here. And the, the most used um, bays are clustered at this one particular end here. Now, this, the stake is made for, basically this medium stake is made for bracelets. Um, it's got these screw threads on the bottom with the washers and that enables the, the stake to be put into a vise and the washers and the nuts are turned so it gives a good hold into the vise. Also what you've noticed perhaps on the stake here, we've got these three uh, tempered steel pins that also support the stake when it goes into the vise as well. And these pins here will locate on the top of the jaw which actually stops the stake from moving around as you hit it. And that's often the case with a lot of stakes is that the, the vise, as, as hard and as tight as you can tighten it, invariably as you're hitting the, the, the silver or the copper, whatever you're shaping, the stake will invariably move. But by having these pins in place and also these screw fastenings underneath here, the stakes will stay completely fixed and solid in the vise. Also, you may notice again, upon the bottom here, we've got the bays down here as well. Well, these screws can be unthreaded and put through onto this side here. So it can be turned upside down and we can use the larger bays on the top there. And the other stake that we have is the little stake. And this is basically, again, machined from Delrin, but this time it's only 5 eighths of an inch thick and it has 11 bays in total ranging from 3 16 which is the tiny one here, right up to the 6 inch diameter here on the center piece. And again, we've got two pins here which locate on the vise, which stops it from, from, from moving. And also again, we have these fittings underneath with the winglets and the washers that stops the stake from moving around in the vise. And like the larger stake, these screws unscrew, they can be put in through the top of the stake here. So again, the stake can be turned over and we can use these larger areas here. So let me just give you a quick demonstration on how we would use the stakes. I've got here a piece of copper. Uh, this copper is 10, sorry, 10 millimeters in width and it's approximately two inches, 50 millimeters, 55 millimeters in diameter. This is just a sample and this is just, I'm just gonna quickly show you what we're gonna do. It's obviously too small for bangle and perhaps not yeah, perhaps the right size for an earring. I've simply turned it round into a circle and I've soldered it with some silver solder. 
And basically I've left it as it is there. I've just tapped it round. We're going to use the, uh, the larger of the two stakes. We're just going to pop that into the vise. Like that. Make sure that's nice and tight. We can do these screws up underneath to make sure that it's really tight in the vise as well. Like that there. And likewise for this one. And that'll make sure that stake is not going anywhere. Right, we need to put upon to this piece of copper some guidelines because you need, as we hammer along the, the, uh, the piece, we need to, to know exactly the area that we're going to be hammering because if we don't put guidelines in there, you'll find that the, the way the shape will be formed will be slightly crooked and wavy. And in this particular instance, that is not what we're after. So the easiest thing to do is to get a Sharpie, which is ah, down here. And we're going to draw two lines. We're going to draw a line roughly four millimeters in from either edge. And the easiest way to do that is to put the piece that you want upon a nice flat surface and with the sharpie by the side, rest the sharpie on the table and just simply turn the piece right around. Flip it over. And you can be sure now that those marks are going to be even from both edge. So you may be wondering what type of hammer we're going to use as well to, to hammer on our stakes. Well, yes, you do need special hammers. I've got three different hammers here. We're looking at a raising hammer. The fascia is quite a large radius on it, and that would be ideal for forming larger pieces. We've also got a collet hammer, quite like, like a hammerhead shark almost here. Uh, nicely rounded on the ends here, a little bit tighter diameter. And also we've got a creasing hammer, like this one here, and the ends are slightly different. We've got quite a, a, a pointed section on this one side and a not so pointed, slightly more rounded. And the idea is that when you hammer uh, with, with whatever particular shape you're using, you'll be able to get into the bays that we've got along here nicely and nice and tight as well. So I'll say we're going to start off with a large stake here. We're just going to put the, um, yeah, we're going to use that center one there, second one there. We're just going to put the piece upon the stake as we have here. And we're going to put our hand underneath. We're going to hold this down because as we're hammering it, we don't want this piece of copper to move around. We want to keep this constantly on the stake and constantly pulling down as well and moving around at the same time. The technique of holding the handle, sorry, the holding the hammer is, is, is very simple. It's just a very nice, simple grip like we have here. Keep your elbow close into the side. Don't have it out here and trying to hit. Keep it all in tight with the body and you've got to have just simple rhythmic blow, blows. Don't try and tense up. Don't try and hit it hard. The idea is just simple rhythmic blows as we go along. Even, equal in power every single time. If you hit it too hard in one place and not another, you're going to get your curves that aren't going to be quite even. So the idea is we're going to be going along using the creasing hammer and we're going to be hammering on the lines as we go along. It always pays to know where you start and where you finish as well. So we're going to have the seam where we've soldered up on the top. So that's where I'm going to start and by the time that seam has come right the way around, that's one complete revolution and I know then that we can turn the piece over and start from the other side. So, point last on for this. So simply going to hold the piece down and we're going to get the crease and hammer and we're just going to tap, just gently. And as we tap, we're going to move the copper along. Now the first couple of blows, as you can see, it's put it well out of shape, but don't worry about that. As long as you keep tapping evenly on that line, it 
equally like this, you can be sure that this curve is going to be equal and the copper, when you finish your revolution, will be completely round. And that's one complete revolution. You see, that isn't completely round because I've hammered it a little bit more in one place than the other, but not to worry. We're going to turn that around now and we're going to hammer on the other line. And you can also hear when the copper is hitting the bottom of the bay. When you initially hit it, it sounds quite dead, quite hollow. But then as the copper then comes to the bottom of the bay and is hitting the bottom of the bay and it is forming to the shape of the bay, you can hear the sound changing slightly. Now I've gone through both sides and you can see now how virtually round that still is. But also you'll be able to see the actual shape that we're looking at here now. And that's just by going around once. So we're going to go around again. Again, find our starting point. And also what you'll find is that because they're plastic, because they're a, a, a Darwin of a plastic material, it's not going to work hard on the metal as much as if you were hammering it against a metal stake either. So what you'll find, you don't have to anneal the metal as often. So I'm just going to go back around. You can hear it bit more of a solid this time because the copper is formed to the shape of the bay. We've gone right round, I'm going to turn it around and go back. And because your arm is close into side here, you won't have to worry about the hammer hitting the, the stake instead of the metal. You can be sure that the hammer will always be hitting your line. And so producing a curve that is nice and even. There we go. So we've gone round once on the other side. And Again, not quite round, but we can always put it on a bracelet mandle just to get it exactly round. But we've got that lovely curved anti-plastic shape. The curve here, the curve in 90 degrees to the main shape. So if you want to, you can put it up onto the smaller bay now. Now we've got that shape. And we can go round now. And again, it's going to be a little bit harder because forming the shape a little bit tighter now. And we'll take that all the way around. Again, I'm hammering on my line. We'll turn it over. And we'll do the same on the other line. around. Make sure the blows are light. If you tense up, you're going to find your elbow is going to hurt and your arm is going to ache. All right, so there. So that's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good. Quite an even round. I've actually cut myself from the sharp side of the copper. But that's what we've got. And what's that taking us? Literally five minutes. What I'll be inclined to do now is to heat that up and anneal it and then carry on using the crease and hammer. Perhaps I'll move to the, the, the tighter crease on it and then hammer directly within the centre just to make sure now we've got that lovely curve. 
and they really are as simple and as easy as that. So those are the two Delrin anti-plastic stakes made by a company called Eid Longi, available from Sutton Tools here in the UK. I must admit, they are really good. Something so simple, so easy, that will give your jewellery a fantastic three-dimensional effect. I'll be producing more films on At The Bench on using the stakes, so stay tuned. I'm Andrew Berry for The Bench. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.